as I go through and um, begin talking about some of these things, you might want to put yourselves on mute if you haven't already, just in case some of our furry companions and our animals, haha, <laughs> just kidding. Um, <laughs> just in case some people make noise in the background, kids, spouses, animals, um, friendly neighbors that pop in, you never know. Uh, it always helps to have uh, yourself on mute because you don't know, especially in the evening, uh, what might happen. And then, of course, uh, I will ask questions along the way and feel free to weigh in. Um, what I want for you to do is to hold on to your questions. Um, I'll stop periodically and see if everyone's good with where we are. But hold on to your questions because if you, you know, want to ask them at the end, I want to make sure that we get through um, some of this material up front. Um, I'll give you a chance to ask those uh, toward the end. And also, if we don't get a chance to talk about what you want to talk about, please email me and send, I have my contact information in this. Um, please email me and let me know what your questions are and I will be happy to respond to them. Okay. All right. So I am going to go ahead and get started since it's 7.02. And as people come in, I am recording. So hopefully if you're interested in seeing this a little bit later, um, then you can request the recording and, um, I, Barbara, I'm sure we'll be able to share that with you. I'm sharing the link with Barbara. Um, but I would like to thank you all for taking the time to do this. My name is Kiki Latalian, and I am the president of the Women's Club of Winona. But I wanted to tell you a little bit about why I think that this particular program, talking about this topic uh, specifically, is so, so important. And the reason why is because when you are trying to manage engagement, programs, projects, all of these different things, and keeping in mind the way, the many ways that your members and your volunteers want to be communicated with, the things that they're interested in, the more members you have, the more volunteers you have, the more difficult it is to keep track of all of the things that they say that they, they want as far as how you communicate with them and what they want to be a part of, what they want to volunteer and do. The other thing is, is that, you know, as we're increasingly becoming busier and busier and moving from one spot to another, um, sharing documents and collaborating digitally is, is also something very, very important for us to think about as volunteers and leaders. When we're trying to communicate from one or a few to many, um, it, as you know, can get very complicated very fast when you're trying to edit the same document or go back and forth on things like bylaws changes. So some of the tools I'm going to be talking about today are definitely leadership tools that are used in the digital realm. So before we even got started, I heard some of you say, oh, for those of us who aren't tech savvy, I hope that you can share some interesting... And I promise you, you're, uh, you're going to get something out of this, even if you don't consider yourself tech savvy. Now, why am I so convinced about this? Well, I'm convinced about it because it's my job to be convinced. So I'm going to share a little bit about uh, myself with you right now. Can everyone see my presentation? All right, good. I see nodding of heads, and that's always a good sign when it's this way, up and down and not this way, <laughs> back and forth. Um, so, you know, my history is that I started out uh, working in associations and nonprofits uh, over 20 years ago. It really made that my career. And today I'm a strategic planning and digital strategy consultant working with associations and nonprofits. So um, I talk about things like trust and community for association and nonprofit leaders. And um, about 13, well, 14 years now, uh, 14 years ago, I founded an online community and blog and podcast called Association Chat. So in the association world, um, which is kind of where, where I spend a lot of my time in my career, 
Uh, that's something that has uh, grown over the years. And it's something that's allowed me to hear from people who volunteer and run uh, nonprofit organizations of all kinds. And so um, when I moved from the DC area, which is association, you know, headquarters of, of the United States, um, to the town of Winona, New Jersey, I had the chance to get involved, uh, I really wanted to get involved in the women's club right away because they were at the heart of everything, it seemed, in our little town. And um, they ran the farmer's market and they did all kinds of projects. And I thought, let me get involved. Let me see what I can do. And very shortly, because I only moved here, I'm just about to celebrate my two year anniversary of living in Winona, New Jersey. Very shortly, I got very involved in the, in the uh, wonderful women's club of Winona and uh, became president. And I think that um, it was something that I had big, I have big shoes to fill, but the one thing that makes me feel uh, confident is that both of the the co-presidents that led the club before me are still very very involved and the other thing is that i have these digital tools that help me to keep things organized and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to share with you today some of those tools that um, have helped us to keep things straight as far as making sure that we keep our volunteers engaged and that we don't lose track of some of those people where maybe they're new and, and we just don't know them very well yet. Um, and ways to also empower our project leaders so that they have the opportunity to bring that, that those volunteers who are the most interested and get them involved. Now, why is that so important? Because, you know, certainly if you have like 10 or 15 really involved members, after a while, it doesn't take too long. You can get to know them and and manage and and you know it's not it's not too difficult to to know their likes and dislikes and to know what it is that they prefer as far as email to text to postcard or a phone call. Well, the truth is is that we have 146 members and there's just absolutely zero way we're going to be able to keep track of all of those people. So, so I needed a way that I would be able to look into how people prefer to be contacted. And we all needed a way, every single officer needed a way, uh, and project leader needed a way to understand the best way to communicate with our volunteers who had raised their hands and said, this is what I'm interested in, or this is what I might be interested in. Now, at this point, I want to talk about trust because it's it's important to explain that when we're talking about technology, that it, it is normal to feel uncomfortable. It is normal to feel uh, like it can get more complicated than it needs to. And it's normal to get frustrated when we're talking about tech. So what I want to do is I want to just, you know, let explain something because I hear this many times from people. And I'm just going to tell you where I, I stand on it, okay? And when we talk about technology, a lot of times people will say, well, but I'm older and the younger kids, they get this stuff, they know it so easy, but I, I don't know, I don't understand this. And I'm gonna push back on that a little bit because I'm gonna tell you that I love my daughter more than anything. She's the girl on the left of this, in this picture. She was helping me interview an author for the podcast that I do. And we had gone to do this interview and I had her ask a question. She's the light of my life. She's also one of the youngest members in our club. She's 15 years old, but when we start talking about trust, you know, it helps to start from the heart. And what I want to share with you is that while, while my daughter is technologically savvy in some ways, does she understand the way to engage with volunteers? No, she hasn't had that experience. Does she necessarily know um, the ins and outs of being able to create forms using Google Docs? No, she doesn't necessarily because she hasn't had to do that. And so before you 
shut down on yourself and say that you don't understand tech. I, I just want to help you to feel a little bit more empowered that you probably know more and understand more about it than you think you do. And that if you just understand that um, it, it it's really starting with small steps and small things, uh, hopefully that will help you to try just one thing that you haven't done before. I also want to give you a little bit of encouragement that if you're one of those people that says that you're not tech savvy, then I do have a handout that you're going to get after this. And it has a link to everything that I'm talking about. Each one of these steps, how to create a Google Doc, how to create a Google Form, how to you know operate your share drive. There's a link to all of these things in the handout. And so you'll be able to access that afterwards if you have questions. Got it? All right, we're good, we're good. Okay, so I'm trying to move right along so you don't get a chance to be bored. Now, I mentioned before, if you have questions, I want you to write them down so you don't forget them. Um, I am going to ask for questions periodically and you are gonna receive the notes and the links following this session. I have my email here, but it is at the end of this, so you don't have to write it down right now. And Barbara can share it later too. So you'll you'll be able to find it if you need it. Um, right now, what I would like to do is find out how you, comfortable you are with your Google account. So in the chat, I'm gonna stop sharing for a second. In the chat screen, what I would love for you to do, and if you see where chat is on, on Zoom, can you find chat? If you find chat over here, what I would love for you to do is I would love for you to answer the question, uh, if you already have a Google account. If you already have a Google account, that could just be Gmail. I want you to type yes into chat, all right? Yes, 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 yes. Lots of yeses. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Anne says, yes, but unfortunately I have more than one. Oh, me too. Me too. All right. Are there any no's? Are there any no's? You can still add your yeses if you haven't had a chance to, but if there's a no out there, if you haven't had experience with a Google, if Gmail or a Google account, Go ahead and type in no. So you haven't had experience for that. All right. Yeah, those those of you with more than one, then you you kind of get like bonus stars because you probably are more <laughs> familiar with it than usual. All right. And we have one person who says no. All right. Okay, and if you are starting from complete scratch, and that might be that might be Barbara McCloskey one or Barbara McCloskey two, because I know we have two people logged in under that name. Um, I don't know if it's the real Barbara or the other Barbara. Um, if you are okay, hey there, I saw you wave. Um, if you are starting from scratch, no Google account no Gmail account, no experience with any of it, then type in UGH, U-G-H, UGH. All right. So if we don't have any UGHs, that's probably good. And one no, there's one UGH. <laughs> okay. So what I'm going to share with you is, is for you, this is going to be a little bit more of, of drinking from the fire hose. But what I want you to pay attention to is the, the are the concepts, what you can pick up from some of this stuff that we're going to talk about today. And if you do nothing else at the end of this, um, I just want you to understand uh, some tools that you'll be able to use that is with the most widely used email platform in the world. And so it's not just for email. It turns out there are other tools that are connected to it and it's free, which is why I think it's the most widely used. So just pay attention to some of these ideas and see if there isn't something that you can use. All right. Okay. So I'm going to go back to sharing my screen. 
I want to establish this baseline effort, this baseline comfort level, because I want you to understand um, where we're starting from. And if you have a little bit of experience with uh, working with just Gmail, this is going to be a lot easier. Some of the stuff I'm talking about is going to be a lot easier than um, it might be for, for some others. Um, but I wanted to go back. We're going to talk about creating digital forms and using shared spreadsheets for volunteer management. We're going to talk about how to create shared Google documents and shared folders. And we're going to talk about how to post documents so that clubs can share them. So if you want to share it with another club or something like that, how you can do it. Now, this sounds super techy and maybe not super fun, but when you see what you can do with it, it gets more fun. So here's why, here's why it's important for us to think about using tech this way. Three, three reasons why trust matters. Now, what does trust have to do with tech? People look at competence and character, two defining uh, key ingredients of trust. They look at competence and character when they try to determine if they can trust you. The character part, I would hope, is probably the easy thing. It's, do you mean what you say? Are you going to do what you say you're going to do? The competence part is the part where people trust that uh, you are organized in the way that you say that you're going to be. If they volunteer for something, you're going to be able to know that and follow up on it. So where we have to be careful in losing trust is we have to be careful about showing that we have both character and competence. Now for character, you know, we have positive intentions. A lot of us wouldn't volunteer if we didn't. We wouldn't be a part of all of this if we didn't care about our communities and about other people um, growing with us and the, our neighbors. Um, but when it comes to competence, you know, in trying to show people that we can do what we say that we mean to do. And in our case, that might mean taking care of them as volunteers and as leaders. Then we have to figure out the best way to be able to stay on top of when they say that they're changing their um, communication uh, preference, when they say that they want to volunteer for something. Um, we have to try to stay on top of that as much as possible because the best way to get a volunteer bar none and research backs this up is by the direct ask, but you want to know the number one way to lose a volunteer when they raise their hand and you don't give them that job. You don't give them a way to volunteer. If they raise their hand and they say, I want to be a part of this, I want to get involved, I want to volunteer, we have to act on that. We have to find a way to put them into service because there is no time that they're more motivated than when they raise their hand for that, okay? So the reason I say that is because um, when I work with volunteer organizations and I start looking at uh, ways that that uh, a lot of trust is lost or we see that uh, engagement is declining. A lot of times the anecdotes that come back are these stories of, well, I, wa I wanted to be involved, but then they just didn't ever call on me. And I guess it's just a click and I'll never be a part of it. So we don't want to have that. We want people to always feel like they're welcome, right? See, I told you, it's not just about tech. All right, so now we're going to talk about why we're collaborating using tech and what can you do with it? What can you actually do? Now I'm going to stop sharing my screen so I can share a different screen. And I want to talk to you a little bit about why collaborating using tech is so important. Now, one of the major reasons is what I shared with you before, which is that when you get over a certain number, you know, it's just really impossible to try to keep track of all of it. But the thing that I also want to tell you is that, and I need to, uh, I need to take my hand down. I like actually raised my own hand and that's, that's awesome. I did it in the frame and then, uh, so maybe I can do this again. Let's see if it'll, <laughs> I'm going to take my hand down. 
if I can, or just keep going, lowering my hand. There we go. Um, but it's also because even if you only had 10 people, how are you going to keep track of this over time? When did they volunteer? Time flies when you're having fun. If they volunteered for the turkey trot two years ago, is it time to check back with them? Do you remember every single person that volunteered to do something from a year ago, six months ago? I can't. I can't keep track of all of it. So what I'm going to talk about first is I'm going to talk about what you can do by creating a volunteer form that will allow you to keep track of these things. When you create a Google form, it can create a spreadsheet for you that will allow you to track for each of the different areas. I'm going to show you how. Sound good? Have I lost any of you? It's 721 and we're still going. Okay. Okay. So, um, so what I'm going to do is I went ahead and created a, a new Google account this morning so that I would be able to start fresh and, and walk you through it. So what I'm going to do is share my video, my screen with you so you can see that. And I am going to um, show you each step of the way. All right. Okay. So here we go. So I created this uh, Gmail account. It's really easy. Um, like I said, on my handout that I'm going to uh, share with all of you, and this is it. Um, it actually has uh, the different tools that you need to use down here, how to create a Google account if you don't have one, how to use Google Drive, how to create a Google form. Um, and then we'll talk about Canva for nonprofits and what you need for that as a little bonus toward the end of this. Um, but let's go back to talking about our, our Gmail account and Google account. So in Gmail, which is what most of you have the most uh, experience with, you'll see that there are these little buttons up here um, to the top right of your screen when you go into Gmail. These are Google apps and they're all free for you to use. And what we're going to talk about next is we're going to talk about, and you scroll on down, using Google Forms. Now, uh, by a show of hands, how many of you have used Google Forms before or created Google Forms? Got one, let's see, a couple. Yay, and clapping, which is even better. That's awesome. All right, so clapping and raised hands. A few of you have had this experience. So pretty simple, right? Those of you who, who have gone to create that, you would click on Google Forms and you can go in and you can start from scratch and create your form. Now, what I wanna do before I get too carried away is I want to show you what, what those options were, because if you didn't ever, if you've never took, taken a look at these things, they have templates up here. It's a very limited template gallery, but it's a start. And they have everything from party invites to event RSVPs to t-shirt signups, uh, event registration, really, really cool. So if you ever might think that you have a little extra time to sort of take a take a gander at some of the templates that they have. These are great places to start if uh, you want to think about what might already be created that you just have to edit a little bit. But let's start and say that we're starting uh, from scratch, okay? So we've got an untitled form and we're gonna create our 2023 volunteer form. And you can put a little description here. I, I went ahead and cheated earlier and I, you know, put this, read the descriptions for each of the club projects below. Even if you filled out a volunteer form before, please take the time to fill this out and submit by Friday, March 24th, 2023. Now this is going to be available to you too, to use as sort of a template or a guide to get started if you haven't done one of these before. Um, I only have a few sample questions that, you know, I think would be typical in what you'd be looking for, but um, you can add to it. What I would suggest you do if you do use this as a template is to just copy it, um, copy the form and then modify it as you would prefer and use it in your own 
in your own drive, but you will have access to this and you can do whatever you want with it. And I don't mind. <laughs> so um, what is really great is that this provides you with all kinds of neat things you can do to add your own header, which they have some uh, themes and they you can upload your own photo if you wanna add your logo or a picture from an event. And it will try to match some of these colors, uh, background colors to whatever image you add. So for example, um, let's say that, you know, I'm going to add, it's an example. I don't know. I was looking at it earlier. I'm just gonna pick something sort of, can't even tell what some of these things are. That seems dangerous. So, um, well, we have our logos up here and I don't know, I'll create something with this parrot. Let's say that, let's just use a parrot as a header. So you're gonna get to use one piece of it, of your picture. So it's good if you have a horizontal image that you've created. And then what it's going to do is it's going to stick that up there and you see that the, the colors adapt as you've, as you've added it to the top. So you've got your volunteer, I could have sworn I filled this out into your form, uh, filling this out. And then you create your question, which uh, for me, I always like to do something like, you know, preferred club email what is your preferred first name? What is your preferred last name? I use preferred as a qualifier because a lot of times, you know, we might sign up, somebody might sign up to become a member, but things change over time, right? And so uh, they might prefer to be known by their nickname or they might prefer to, they might've gotten a divorce or gotten remarried or something like that. So there's all kinds of reasons why they might want to update their information in the volunteer form each year. Um, what's your preferred way to receive updates from us? Check all that apply. Some people say everything, and then some people will just have one preferred mode. And you try to recognize that when you're reaching out to them for volunteer purposes. What's your preferred number to use to, to text or to call you? In our club, we have a, a large number of people who prefer to be parts of group texts. Now, I'm gonna raise my hand and say, I don't prefer that. <laughs> I don't prefer to be part of group texts, but some people, that's how they you know, prefer to be contacted and, and to deal with their volunteer uh, efforts. And so um, it's always helpful to know when that's the case. Uh, an example of one of the, um, one of the programs that I included on this, this sample volunteer signup form was a girl, Girls Career Institute. We put a little tiny description and you'll see why it's small. Um, and then the lead so that that can give people somebody to talk to an idea of who's actually the project lead at present. If there is no lead or if we're looking for one, I'll put a project lead to be determined or project lead looking for one. And then that's an indicator that, you know, that might be something if they want to jump in and get really involved, they know. And then you have options like interested, maybe interested, tell me more and not interested. Full disclosure, I'm a maybe interested person. I most likely will not say for sure that I want to do something or that I'm interested in something until I know a little bit more about what somebody is expecting from me. Um, just because I don't wanna over promise or commit my time uh, without knowing exactly what is expected. So a lot of people are like that. So the maybe interested, tell me more folks, I, I have a lot of respect for them and I kind of think about them as interested, but just need to have their arms twisted a little bit <laughs> or just to get a little more information. Then we have a special state project coordinator for the Emanuel Cancer Foundation. This was another one that I figured a lot of us would have. So it gives a little bit of an explanation, project lead again, and you can fill in whoever that would be for you. For the idea of secession planning, uh, would you be interested in learning more about any of the following officers and or project chair roles on the club's executive board? Please select all positions you'd like to learn more about. We're creating short videos that explain a little bit about the roles and responsibilities for each of our officers and project chair positions. 
And these short videos are going to give a little bit more information, but this is a way for us to identify people who may be new to us or maybe old to us too, that have just discovered that they're interested in finding out more as far as getting engaged in the, at the officer and executive board level. So um, that's something that um, you know I've found to be really helpful. And then what skills, hobbies, or interests would you like to learn more about at our events? And what skills, hobbies, or interests would you like to teach at our events? Um, what we found is that people who spend all day doing things like accounting don't necessarily want to talk about the same thing or teach the same things at night. They might want to talk about yoga or their love of meditation. They might want to talk about, we just had somebody who is a Reiki master and who gave a presentation on that. So it's always interesting to find um, what people want to learn more about and what they want to teach. Um, I am going to give you, I, I'm going to uh, give you this as a template to start from, but it's so easy to add to it. As soon as you think that you have a question that you want to add, you do something like this and you can say, uh, ask the question of, um, we have a communications chair, like a communications team position. So giving a description, project lead, um, blah, 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 you get the gist. And then you would say, um, you know, you're interested. I, if I had to do it again, would do the interested, but start with an A. Okay. Then go, uh, what was it? Possible, maybe interested, tell me more. And then not interested, which is also good to know. All right. And then you've got your, your um, you can move this around and you've got that on there. So let's say we want that at the top and to bold it. And you see how easy it is to just kind of navigate and, and do things. Now over here in settings, after you've created it, you'll see that you have uh, these settings and defaults. So you've got your questions, then you've got your settings. And these little buttons here, these little sliders are oftentimes all turned off. I like to say, I like to have collect email addresses turned on. I like for people to always get a copy of their response so that they can go back to their own email and see what they said that they were interested in. And I like to allow response editing because any, you know, if you're like me, you might think about it later and be like, oh, I'm not really interested in that. Maybe I should go back and change it. Um, then this will allow people to do that and update. And people do go back and they do update the, the volunteer entries as the time goes on. And then in your form defaults, and you can play around with this, you can see make questions required by default. I don't, I don't require all of the questions be answered because I know sometimes people have to have to uh, bail when they're in the pro in the progress but I do like to show the progress bar. So that way they see that there's light at the end of the tunnel, that they're halfway through. And I also don't like to shuffle the question order because I try to present the volunteer opportunities in order of the time of year that they happen so that people are kind of looking through the seasons. Um, they don't know that they're looking at them this way but I have them organized that way so that when I'm able to go through the spreadsheet at the end of it, I can look at sections and see how many people, how many volunteers we have for the programs that are coming up in like the second quarter of the year. So why are we doing all of this? What is the point? Well, because see this little button here, this creates your spreadsheet based on the responses. And when you create the spreadsheet, this is what happens. Um, so this is somebody who filled it in as a sample from earlier. This is from our, our earlier sample. So it's not very filled in, but you see that they've, they've gone through and, and added their information. Um, and you can see the timestamp of when they signed up, 
all of their information. If you wanted to uh, organize this according to last name, alphabetical, you could do it. If you wanted to do it according to when's the most recent volunteer signed up, um, you could do it that way. Um, and for these, you can see if they're not interested or interested in these different areas. Now I'm gonna show you a little behind the scenes what ours looks like uh, for, and we have a, we have a lot, but, um, you know, since we started this, I think we have like 42 or 43 in our most recent, uh, project sign up. And it's really super helpful because for the project leads, when whoever it is, that's responsible for, for each of these different areas, um, when they say, well, who are my volunteers who said that they're interested? I can create a spreadsheet for them that gives them exactly who's interested, when they signed up, um, what their preferred way to receive updates happens to be, and anything else that they're interested in knowing uh, based off of what was in the based off of what was in the form. So this is an example where, and I, I always lock the form responses here so that this can't really ever change. Nobody can really delete this because as, as soon as that information is added, it's, it's in the form responses. But anybody has access to this, any officer has access to this and can copy it and put it into a different tab. So in this tab, we have farmer's market. We have the farmer's market of Winona, little description, the project lead, and we have, um, you know, the information that we talked about before. Now, what's interesting about this? Well, we can see that the most recent came from the day after Valentine's Day this year. And this person said, okay, she is interested in being receiving updates through email, social media, the Facebook group, Instagram, Twitter, text messages. This is her number. And she's interested. She wants to get involved um, in the farmer's market of Winona. This is really important because right now we're gearing up for the season opening on May 4th, which all of you are invited to go. If you want to come, it's from four to seven. You can check out the farmer's market of Winona, but it's a Thursday. I, it's a weird time, I guess, <laughs> like during the week. But if you want to come and see what it is, we have music. It's great. Um, but for our purposes tonight, what's interesting to see is that you can, you can sort this according to how uh, recently they actually signed up. So you could look through all of this and say, okay, um, I want to sort this range, go to advanced sorting options by the most recent, which would be Z to A. We're not going to start from from that and um, from the farmer's market, since it's showing who's interested and, and that sort of thing, we'll do that. And so we have sorted according to the timestamp by most recent. These are the most recent people who have signed up and we can see who said that they're interested, who said that they're interested or not sure, um, keep them posted, and then who's not interested. And then that person can go through, and I would say, you know, sort by this column by itself, take out all the people who are not interested, and then reach out specifically with more details about how to get involved to all of those people who signed up, okay? And in that way, uh, Erica, in this case, who's the lead for the project lead for the farmer's market, um, that way Erica can reach out and say that all of these people who, you know, for Christina here, she said she raised, she's raised her hand. This is essentially a digital raising of the hand um, that says, I'm interested in this. Now, where do we fail? We fail if in a year from now, Christina hasn't heard from anyone and never got invited to participate in the farmer's market as a volunteer. That's where we fail. Where do we win? We win if for every single person that raised their hand, they feel like we paid attention and we let them know and we, we kept track. Now, that's where it falls you know, in line with the project lead and they manage things the way that they, that they think best. Um, if it were me, what I would do is I would keep a little additional 
column for myself on my own drive and make notes about reaching out when I reached out, uh, if they were interested in testing out being a greeter or if they said that they'd help with social media or whatever. I mean, I would try to keep notes on, on the people that I reached out to and when. But what we like to do is to give our project leads a lot of, um, you know, they have uh, autonomy on the way that they approach their different volunteer tasks. And so that's, that's one of the things that we can do um, to help make their jobs easier. So this says, do all the people who, and I'm checking in the chat, um, do all, all the people who receive this Google form have to have Gmail or a Google account? No, they don't. Any email, any email account will work. You don't, you, even the person who said that I haven't ever had a Gmail account, even if you have email, then you can fill out this form. You don't have to have a Gmail account to access the form. Anybody can do it. Um, what I will say is that when it goes to doing things like collaborating, um, using, uh, for example, like if you're an officer and you're wanting to say, create your own spreadsheet off of this and do things like keep notes, like I was talking about, it might be helpful if you have a shared drive and you're all using the same shared drive um, and saving your documents in that, that one source of truth, that one place. Okay. So I'm going to talk about that next, but let me take a breath. I'm going to take a sip of tea and I'm going to check in with you. How's everyone feeling right now? Yes. Let's see. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Yes. I'm scrolling, scrolling. I see some thumbs up. All right. Yes. Even digital thumbs up. Nice. And for those of you, if you have sort of the, the glazed Kiki, I don't know. It's 742. I don't know how much I can give you right now. That's okay too. <laughs> That's okay too. <laughs> mm. All right. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about um, creating your drive. So what I did is I uh, create a sample drive, a sample shared drive. Now, when we were over here, do you remember when we were looking at the Gmail account earlier and I, I talked about these Google apps right up here, this little grid, it's so strange, this little grid. It kind of reminds me of like when we would punch on our phones and, and stuff. I don't know if anybody still does that. <laughs> I feel like we all live off of these, right? But um, when you're thinking about uh, punching in the buttons on a phone, it's kind of like that. And you've got your, your apps down here. And here we see Drive. Now, why is Drive important? Well, Drive is really handy if you want to share a bunch of things, a bunch of resources, a bunch of documents in the same place and give access to certain people that are all going to upload and share from the same place. And so... In this case, I want to create a sample for us to use today. And uh, so in my drive, and this is from my new account I just created this morning, I created for our session, this digital tools resources. This is our sample volunteer signup form. And all of you will have access to this and you can use it as a uh, template, copy it, play with it, whatever you want to do after this. It's, it's, this is all for you guys. Um, this is, these are the responses that shows, you know, that comes from that form. This is uh, our note. I decided to upload our notes to the same spot, right? And you can go through and see notes and learn more about each of these areas I'm talking about afterwards. And then I also want to uh, upload a sample newsletter and I'll talk about that here in a second. But I, I created a sample drive to give you an idea about how you might consider laying this out if you don't already have something like this in operations. Now, some of you may, so I don't wanna have you reinvent the wheel. But if you're starting from scratch on collaborating out of one shared drive, this is sort of a, a sample of how you might consider doing it. And um, so something like uh, 
2023 monthly programs, emails to members. And what you would do is you'd want to give everyone access to this who are officers, who would want to upload, who has a reason to be in these different, in these different folders. And so the way that you would do that is to hit share based off of that. And to make it easy, I would put anyone with the link, but to make sure that only goes to the people that you want to give it to. Okay. Copy the link and then you can share it. And the way that you might remember to do this is to create a document that says useful club links, shared drive or share drive, however you prefer. And then having that so that people know where to go and, and what to use. Now, one thing I didn't tell you about before, and I know I realize I've created about a dozen of these now. <laughs> one thing I didn't tell you about before is when you're sharing your, your volunteer signup form, um, the, the sharing it, what can you do? Well, you can collect emails as you share it. You can copy and paste and fill in the emails specifically um, to the people that you want to reach out to. I always like to check this little box that says include form and email. So people don't necessarily have to open an attachment, but it's included in within the email. And then you can hit send like that. You can also get a link and, oh, sorry. Oh gosh. Sorry, my daughter. You remember the 15 year old I was talking about before? Opening and closing doors. The dog was not happy. Okay. So we have shortening the URLs, which makes this a little bit easier. Hitting copy. And again, you might want to create something like this useful club links and to paste that into your document. And then if you want to get super fancy and embed your and embed your volunteer form on your website, you can do that too and embed using your HTML code. If you don't want to get super fancy, but you do have a Facebook group, <laughs> then you can go and share on Facebook and then share in group. And in this case, I'd be sharing to our women's club and then say a little something and then people can volunteer and see a preview of what that volunteer form looks like. All right, I'm gonna check our chat because I see that I have a few messages. Oh, Lisa, okay. Yes, how do you share forms? There you go. I think I answered that, but, but do you need a little bit more on that? I might have answered it. Since yeah, um, yeah, a little more if you can. Some of our members aren't very tech savvy. So how do you get them to engage in the form and how do they actually access? You kind of answered that a lot, but that would be yeah. helpful. Yeah, so, so one way is um, from the form, you have a lot of different options. So you've got sharing it to your Facebook, which is easy for those who access Facebook. But what I think is probably the easiest is um, you can either copy a shortened URL and add it to a normal email that you would send out to your members. So if you send like a, you know, this month or this week, this is what our activities are, then I would copy that and I would paste that into, you know, one of the monthly emails. So like say you'd have emails to members, you could create the doc, um, you know, monthly email. And in that you would have your link as you're talking about the form. Um, the other thing that you could do is if you already had uh, their emails included um, somewhere on a list. So for example, uh, for us, let's say I wanted to send this to, well, this isn't all of our members, but um, what I would do is, is like copy and paste if I had like 10 or 15 and I would put that into the two line. Why I think that you might want to use the um, 
the link and copy that and put that into another email is it will give you a chance to explain a little bit more about the volunteer form, your call to action, when it's due, you know, what they can expect from it. Um, just so you're, you're not surprising them and they're getting some weird form in the mail and they don't know why. Right. So, um, that's that hopefully that that helps to answer it, but basically just like you'd share any link, that would be the way that you'd want to, to share it and just offer a little explanation around it. Now I'm going to um, talk about one other thing in Google Docs, but I want to touch on Canva really quickly, okay? So in Google Docs, when you are uh, looking around and playing in this, I want you to uh, take a look at some of these templates. And the reason why is because if you look, go to Google Docs, click on from a template, you'll see that there are things like newsletter, they have resume, brochure, different types of things. Um, this can give you a, a start. And so for those of us who might just have a little bit to share, but we want something to be a little more visually appealing, um, this allows you to go in and you could add your logo, you can, you know, change whatever the wording is with this. If you have more than one person that's working on it, you can have edits become suggestions. And uh, sorry. So monthly newsletter. Now we just talked about uh, some of this and talking, um, filling out our our project forms, talking about some of the great things that we've done throughout the past year. But this is a chance for, if you need to just sort of up, up level, level up, that's it, level up your newsletters, an easy way to do it. Another way you could do it is by using a tool called Canva. Now, how many of you are familiar with Canva? Ooh, Lisa's excited and she is waving. Yes, Randy, let me see, let me look through. Carol, oh yes, I see happy faces. Do you, I just want you all to take a look and see how happy the faces are for those who are waving their hands. If you know, to know Canva is to love Canva. And so the reason I bring it up is because there is a free version of Canva, but uh, you want Canva Pro and you can get that for free as a nonprofit. And Randy already has looked into this, explored it, shared uh, you know, different ways that people can um, look into it and get more information. She added Canva Pro to the website under benefits of membership. So um, you can find information there and you can also check out canva.com slash Canva for nonprofits and get more information. But uh, these are the documents that Randy shared. They're acceptable for any nonprofit club when filling out the two minute application. And as long as you have one of those, you can get access to the tools that I'm about to use. And trust me, when you see these, you're going to love them. Now, why am I so sure? Because for those of you who say, I don't have time to design, I'm not a designer. I don't know um, how to change one program announcement from, you know, it doesn't look right on Facebook, but then it looks silly on Instagram and it was fine in the email. Up here, I want to show you how easy this is. Facebook post, landscape. <laughs> it opens it up. It's exactly the dimensions you need to be optimized for use to posting to Facebook. You choose a template and they have tons of templates. Reminder, meeting next Monday. You can do stuff like say we're going to, well, we know these guys, let's do this. <laughs> so say you have your, your logo uh, set up. You are ready to rock and roll. Let's, you know what? Uh, I do believe that Facebook does things with animation. You can post a video. Let's make it a little fancy. And you know what? I want to add some music. So happy ukulele song. 
Okay. And then what I can post to Facebook is something like this. I download it and boom, we have meeting next Monday. And how hard was that? Now, once you spend a little bit of time in it, you can actually set it up your own style, your own brand. So I have Women's Club of Winona here. Um, and then you can even use your own palette. So don't like that one, don't like that one, could do this, could do this. And it goes with the colors that you have. Now you may uh, recognize some of the magic in action from this little flyer that you saw for what we're doing here tonight. Um, totally created in Canva. And I even used uh, some of the colors from our club to, to play around with it. Um, newsletter. Here we go. A little logo that was created, our farmer's market. But this is like, you know, they have newsletter templates in there too. As you can see over here on the side, you have a lot of different options. So you can make it totally yours using your own style. Free tool, not bad, right? It was worth the, the five minutes that it took to talk about it. Yes. <laughs> so once you have, once you have um, some of these documents that you've created and you've downloaded, then ideally you're sharing them in one central location that your officers can can access, or if you're sharing with other clubs, you can share access. What you might do if you want to do that was you is that you might create a new folder that is specifically for um, all clubs. Let's just make it simple, all clubs, all clubs. And then in all clubs, these are things that your documents are sharing for everyone. And you can add the people. Who are you sharing it with? You're sharing it with uh, anyone with the link, or you can change that to restricted. Only people with access can open the link. Now, what I will say about this is it's a lot easier. Um, now, if you're adding it one by one, you can do it like that, and they can have access that way. But if you're not adding it one by one, you might want to do this, anyone with a link. And you also need to come over here and indicate if you want them to have access to be an editor or comment, or if they only are able to view. All right. Um, because depending on what you put over there, if, if you want them to edit something and they don't have uh, that role assigned, then you'll have to go back and, and give them that, that ability. Okay. All right. It's a lot. Did it feel like you just drank from a fire hose? <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. So I'm going to stop sharing for a second so that, that we can talk. Um, and canva.com also app. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. What about privacy? Does Google collect this info? Well, okay. So you can choose to not have Google collect certain things like um, location information and stuff like that. But the truth is, is that, you know, anything, if you ever hear that something's free, you should always have alarm bells going off because free doesn't ever really mean free. So I think that um, when you're using something like uh, Gmail, which, what is it, 36 uh, 30, 36, 37 percent of emails are all like Gmail, you know, um, based. When you're using something like that, chances are that you don't have as much pri privacy as as you would like. So, um, Google probably does collect some kind of information, but I will say that when you go into your own Google account, you can um, you can indicate in there whether you what kind of information you're allowing them to collect. Um, I'll say this that even when you they're not allowed to collect like your location information and stuff like that, I have my doubts. Um, I just feel like they probably have a way to see it, but I'm not sure other than going completely off the grid that any of us can really avoid some of our information getting collected. Can you BCC a form in email? 
You can BCC people um, if you are, say you're sending the form uh, as a link and you can use BCC like you would, which is blind copy um, and sending it where people wouldn't see who, who else is getting it in that BCC field. Um, so yes, you can. Now, um, obviously, if they're trying to, you know, if they want to respond all for some reason or something like that from a BCC, you can't, but I don't know if you have a specific, uh, concern, concern about that, let me know. But yeah, I mean, if you're sending the link, it's just like any regular email where, um, where you can BCC somebody in that, uh, anything else. Okay, what I wanna do is I wanna give you all access to uh, this drive that has information on all the tools that we talked about today. Um, and this is all of the, the resources that I mentioned, the, the sample uh, template form, volunteer signup form. And I am going to make it so that you all have access to that. And I'm going to copy the link and put it in here and put it into our meeting chat. Also, Barbara will send out um, a follow-up email at some point, probably tomorrow, <laughs> I'm guessing. But she will send out a um, follow-up email that has the link. She has the links um, already. And so she'll be able to share that as a follow-up. And how do you have such a big club? I have big shoes to fill. Um, actually, you know, I think that based off of, so when I moved here, part of what made me want to move here to Winona is that it has such an active community. Um, people are out, you know, kids were, you know, biking in the streets and parents were, you know, walking their dogs. And I mean, it just was a very, um, it was a lovely neighborhood, but one thing is I was sort of casing it out online ahead of time was that uh, these weekly farmers markets that were had, um, that are had uh, throughout part of the year, they're weekly. And every week, I think neighbors have a touch point where they're able to meet with other neighbors and connect. And I think that that's part of it. I think that we loosened up a lot of the more bureaucratic rules for the club so that one of the concerns for many years was that um, people would talk and they, I'll still have people ask me about this. They'll say, uh, well, I really want to become a member of the club, but I can't, I can't attend every meeting and I know there's a requirement and I'll still, you know, and I'll still be saying it. it it was already changed before I came to the club. Um, but I'll say, oh no, there's, you're fine. If you can only make some of the meetings or if you can only participate in some of the events, we want you, we want you to be a part of this. And I'll say that every meeting that we have, we, we fill, we fill all of the space. I mean, we fill the little train station we meet at um, every month. And I think that the programming is really strong and people are really excited. But, um, and yes, we have evening meetings. Um, they happen once a month and they're at seven o'clock and they run for an hour. And if you, if you ask all the officers, I also, I, I run a tight ship for the schedule because I don't want people thinking that they can attend the meeting and it's gonna drag on forever. So strictly 30 minutes uh, to our business meeting, never over that. And then everything else is pro the program. So we really try to keep the business meeting, you know, sort of hop in and keep people interested and talk about what's coming up. Um, ask for any announcements on what's going on in the community or things that are that would be good for the whole club to know. And then we um, adjourn the business portion of the meeting and move on to our program. And, and that's, that's sort of the format for everything that we do as far as our monthly meetings are concerned. So this is fun. <laughs> well, I hope that you got a lot out of this. I know that I pushed a lot of information to you, but like I said, um, you have access to the, the handout. You have, you'll have access to my slides once uh, we get off of this um, and the, the recording renders, you'll have access to this recording should you, should you want it. Um, and then 
Uh, so you only meet evenings and for an hour. Yes, but, and I'll show you one more thing before, before I let you go. Okay. Um, I'm going to show you one more thing and why it's really important to, to understand that situation. So our list of programs, we only have one monthly meeting in the evening and it runs for one hour. That is true. We also have an enormous amount of projects that are going on at all the, like all the time. So even if we only have one monthly meeting, understand we have pop-up events, the farmer's market that's every week, the turkey trot, the service projects and field trips, uh, all of the holiday stuff, which I'm sure, you know, you all can understand once we hit the holidays, it's just like, boom, 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 tons of stuff. Um, we have like the writing contests, the, uh, senior scholarships, yard sales coming up, the library book sale, plant sale. Um, so we have, we have a ton of, of different projects and programs. So it, it seems like there's always something happening, even though we only have one, technically we only have one monthly meeting that lasts for an hour. I think it's more than enough. And, and honestly, um, we have more ideas on things that we want to do. People want to bring back a garden uh, tour. They want to bring back the holiday homes tour that once happened. Um, there's a lot of interest in uh, doing an art walk that, that, you know, we've given, we're giving back to the town an $85,000 gift as part of our celebrating our hundred years of being a club in Winona. And so, um, so there's a lot that's going on and it's really, it's uh, even with 146 members, it's, it's our town's only one square mile. So like, you know, <laughs> it's like, there's a, if, if there's somebody around, we're, we're really trying to keep them engaged and wanting to be a part of it. So yeah, it's exciting. The, the once a month meeting is more than enough. The executive board meeting, you know, we have one of those once a month too, but we try to do that by Zoom. So that kind of like this, so that everybody can just keep it to a minimum and, and make sure that they um, feel like they can add it into their lives. It's not too much. So woohoo. And Jennifer just added your number, your 100th club member. Yay. Yay. So thank you all for attending. I know that I went, I know that I went over and I'm sorry about that, but, um, but if you need anything, if you want to ask any questions, please feel free to reach out. I know Barbara's going to send out some follow-up information, um, but I hope you got something that was helpful, something that was inspiring, something that might help you. Um, please keep in touch. And I hope that we run into each other. I was just looking at my information about the conference, right? And so, um, so I promise we'll get off of here, but yeah, if you're going to be at the uh, convention and for the New Jersey State Federation of Women's Clubs of GFWC convention, then let me know because I would love to meet up with you there. I'll be there too. All right. So thank you. Cheers. We made it through. <laughs> thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thanks everyone. Have a great, have a great evening. Enjoy your tea, your wine, whatever you happen to have with you. And, and I hope you sleep well. Great job, Kiki. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Right. That was wonderful. Yay. Good. I'm glad. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great rest of the evening, everyone. You too. Thanks. Thank you. All right.